everybody, it's Rob here from Rovitix Media, and today we're going to be showing you how to build your very own Roku application. Now, a lot of people seem to have a lot of issues with our software and getting it set up and actually running on the Roku, so I've decided to do this tutorial. We're going to walk you through the very basics. You don't need anything except for a Roku device and a Windows PC. Everything else we're going to show you how to set up, so let's get into the tutorial. First things first, we're going to need a Roku device. Now you can pick one up, anything from a Roku stick, uh, Roku 2, 3, or 4, um, between what, 40 bucks and maybe 140 at the top end. So any of those devices will work for this. And uh, it's actually pretty easy. So go pick one up. If you don't have one already, what are you doing paying for cable? But that's another story. So first things first, uh, like I said, you're going to need a Roku device. Once you have your Roku hooked up to your TV and running, you're going to need to enable developer mode. Now, this isn't very hard. As you can see on screen, it's this little command here. So home button times three, up button times two, right, left, right, left, right. And this will bring you up to a screen. You just follow the prompts on the screen, uh, put in a password, and you're off to the races. Now, you're going to need to know this password in order to get everything set up, so make sure you've got it written down. Then we're going to need a copy of Eclipse. Eclipse is a developer environment that uh, allows you to write code for various uh, programs and uh, languages. A lot of people get confused by this. It's actually pretty simple. So just take a deep breath, go over and download your version. Now, if you are on an old Windows machine, you're going to need the 32-bit. If you're on anything newer than the last three or four years, you're going to need the 64-bit version. So download and install that to your computer. Next up, you're going to need the Java Software Engineer Developer Kit. Sounds complicated. It's really not. It's just a library of stuff you will need to develop. So we're going to download the version for either Windows x86 if you're using 32-bit or x64 if you're using the 64-bit. And then finally, we're going to need to install the Eclipse plugin for the Roku device development. So people get a little confused by this. Uh, basically, what, what happens is, is in order to develop for any of these devices, whether it be Roku, Fire TV, Android TV, you're going to need developer libraries. Now, basically, these are just a collection of commands that you can issue that will do certain functions in your application. Roku has their own, and it's really easy to set up. So, okay, so once we open up Eclipse, we're going to need to add these uh, plugin libraries. And in order to do so, you just go up to the help button, go down to install new software. And now we're just going to go back to our web browser here. And in the Eclipse plugin guide, we're going to need to install three different libraries. So the first one is the EMF library. So we're just going to copy that link, come back to Eclipse, and we're just going to paste it in here. And you'll notice that a bunch of different libraries come up. I'm not 100% sure which libraries are used for Roku. So just for safety's sake, I say select all. And then we're just going to click next. And this will take a second to calculate all the dependencies and go through and look for computing alternative solutions and whatnot. But I already have these installed on my computer, so it's not a big deal. It will come up and it will ask you to um, accept an agreement in order to finish installing, just do so, click finish, it will restart your Eclipse uh, program, and when it reopens, you'll be back into this window. And then we're just gonna do the same thing, install new software, go back to the Roku plugin guide, grab number library number two, the DLTK libraries, we're gonna copy that link, Come back into Eclipse, go to the work with section, add the link, and, and there we go. We'll just select all again, click next, uh, agree to the terms, click finish, restart Eclipse. 
And then finally, just one more, we're gonna come back into here to help, install new software, go back over to the Roku plugin guide, and we're going to need to grab this one from rokudev.roku.com slash updates. We're just gonna copy that link, go back over to install new software, and as soon as we paste it, we get BrightScript. We click yes. BrightScript is the programming language that Roku's use. And then we're gonna click next, accept the agreement, click finish, restart Eclipse once again. Okay, so when we get back into Eclipse, we're gonna get started building our first Roku application. So the first thing I like to do is change the, the editor layout this layout was designed basically for working with Android and uh, we're just going to switch it so it works better with Roku. So if you come up to the top right corner, there's a little button here called Open Perspective. We're going to click that. We're going to select Bright Script from the very top and we're just going to click OK. OK, so once we're all ready and switched over to Bright Script, you can tell by going to the top right corner again and you'll see that Bright Script is selected. We're going to then connect it to our Roku device to make sure that uh, we can get debug information down here in the Roku debug console. So we're just going to come over to Roku IP, select it from the drop down list, and give it a second. And I apparently have a problem here with my Rokus. Hold on, I'm just going to go fix it. Okay, after some figuring around, it turns out my Roku was actually locked up from development, which does happen. Occasionally, you'll be building something, your Roku will lock up, and you will have to unplug it and restart it. But such is a developer's life. Okay, so now the fun stuff. We're going to get started by going to File, New, Bright Script Project. We're going to give it a name. We're going to create new project and workspace. And then we're going to choose a template. Now for this example, it doesn't quite matter which one you use, but we're just going to pick the audio app. In the readme section, you will see a description of what the app entails um, and how it sort of works very basically. And then we have some options here that we're not going to cover in this tutorial. So we're just going to click next. And this will tell you the list of files and folders it's going to create. So we're just going to click finish. And then if you go over here to the project explorer, we'll see if we open it up, a list of our directories and files. Okay, so the manifest is where you would put your title of your app, subtitle, um, if you're doing a screensaver, the version number, icons, uh, adding optional libraries. I'll explain those in a second. And then we have our splash screen information. Now, one thing to really note, under other settings, there's one called is hidden. If you have a problem and uh, can't seem to find your app on your Roku, make sure you double check this. Okay, so optional library loading. Since we've selected the audio app, we can include these libraries if we feel the need. Uh, we have the requires audio metadata, which loads a library that allows you to read audio metadata from the MP3 files. And then we can also include MKV, which is a video encoding standard, which isn't included by default with your Roku app. So since we don't need any of these, uh, we do need to enter in the splash screens uh, and the background color and the minimum time displayed. So to do so, you just click the little three dots by each uh, field, go in and uh, you can check the images. And a splash screen should be uh, 720p or that's 1280 pixels by 720 pixels high and your SD splash screen should be 720 pixels by 480 pixels high. So we're just gonna select two of the files for examples. The background color. Now, this is not the background for the app. This is the background for the splash screen. So the initial screen that shows up on your Roku as the app loads. 
Now you can make it whatever color you want. I'm just gonna choose black, click OK. And the minimum time displayed, this is how long you allow your splash screen to stay visible while the app loads in the background. Now the splash screen will not disappear until the app is fully loaded. But sometimes you may have content loading after the app has loaded. So you can extend your minimum time displayed on the splash screen so the splash screen stays visible longer so that your content has a chance to load in the background. So we're just gonna put that in, it's in milliseconds. So we're gonna say 2,500 milliseconds, which is 2.5 seconds. And we're just gonna save it. You can press Control S or go up here to file and click save. So now we're ready to deploy it to our Roku. So we're going to go to file, export. And in the export window, you're gonna to wanna to come down to bright script and bright script deployment. Click next. Now, this screen can be a little funky, so I'm gonna do my best to explain it to you. Up here, you have your files and directories that are listed in the Roku app. Occasionally, when you add a new file, it will not get added to the packaging list, so you'll have to go in and select it. So you just go to the directory, find the file that you just added, and make sure a check mark is beside it. And yeah, as you can see, we're loading our images and source directories, because those are the two that have most of the files that we need. So it's gonna give you an option to name your zip file. You can call it whatever you want. I always recommend turning on overwrite existing zip file without warning, um, just because sometimes you'll get a warning. It gets annoying when you're building multiple builds of the same app. And then we have auto increment manifest version. So this will take and automatically update the version number for you each time you build the app. Now I personally like it on build, which uh, leaves the first two numbers the same and then adds incrementally to the very last number. So it would be, the next build would be 1.0.2, 1.0.3 and so on. And you can also turn on generate manifest build value as current date time. So that will give the build number the actual day. So that will give the version the actual day, hour, month, time format at the end instead of, you know, dot one, dot two, dot three. So now under deployment, um, this is how you select which Roku device you want it to go to. So we're gonna click install on Roku box. We're gonna select our device. And you'll notice I did not fill in my password, so it's gonna pop up and give me an authentication error that the password had not been set up. So I'm just gonna add my password. And now if you go back down here and just reselect it again, you'll see that no error pops up and we're good to go. Now create package file. This is what we're gonna cover in part two of this tutorial that should be out in a few weeks. We're gonna talk about how to package and upload your app to the Roku developer console, but uh, for now, we're just gonna skip it. So down here, you can also change your app name and version. I'd recommend just letting Eclipse fill that out and we're gonna click finish. You can see it takes a second and loads to the Roku device. And I don't have any sort of way to uh, get you screen captures from my Roku currently. So, but I promise you it is up on screen on my Roku here to my left. <laughs> so down here in the console area, this is where it will give you debug information. Should there be something wrong? Now you can go through the app on your Roku and play around and hopefully everything worked properly for you. If you got any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the description. Don't forget to like and share this video with your other Roku developer friends. And I'll see you next week for our very first Amazon Fire tutorial.